Hey, what's going on, Beewood? We are in Easter week, Holy Week. And so today I want to talk to you about a topic called forever, okay? Now, have you ever thought how long forever is? Well, if you Google it, okay, Google says that you'll learn that it, it simply says for, for all time or for always. Now, there aren't many things in life that I could say that I could do forever. Now, there are a couple things I could do forever. I could eat pizza forever. I could always do that. I could watch sports forever, right? So there's certain things that I could do that I could honestly do forever. But have you ever heard the phrase, I'm juggling too much right now? I'm juggling too much right now. You see, that's the phrase that people use when they say that they've got a lot of things going on. But isn't that really how life seems to be sometimes? I mean, if you really think about it, you're, you're trying to make it through everything that you've got going on, all the things that you've got uh, uh, piled up. And on top of that, you've got school, some of you work, some of you got responsibilities, some of you have daily routines, daily chores. And on added, on, on, on added to that, you also are managing things like relationships. Maybe you've got friend drama. Maybe you've got fear, anxiety, and stress. And it feels like there's a lot of things to juggle. And on top of that, you're at the age where you're trying to figure out if it is what you believe to be true or if this relationship thing brand new. Maybe you're starting to ask yourself when it comes to things like your faith, Maybe you're starting to ask yourselves, do I really believe in Jesus? Or is this Christianity thing? Is it really just something that is my parents' religion? You begin to ask yourselves the questions like, am I content actually believing in God? Or do I want to follow Jesus really my whole life? Or lastly, what do I do with the questions that I have? About God. You see, there's a lot of things that, there's a lot of reasons why we, we have questions and doubts about God. Sometimes we start asking questions because we're learning, we're growing. I remember when I gave my life to God, there was a lot of questions that I had because I wanted to learn. I wanted to grow. I wanted to know more about God. Those questions that we ask are important and we have to think about them critically. But sometimes doubts can form when we experience something that's that's painful or confusing and you start asking tough questions about God or what you believe and it can be pretty heavy and it can be pretty overwhelming. I mean, we just are in, in, in almost the end phase of a pandemic. And maybe in 2020, you were at a point in your life where you were questioning, where is God? I mean, with everything around us and this whole pandemic that we're experiencing, people are dying and people are getting sick and, and everything, school is just transformed. I mean, everything is different. We don't go to church anymore. We do it online. And, and you begin to ask yourself the question, where's God in the mix? Where is he? I mean, I thought he was there, but where is he? We begin to ask questions like what you believe, what don't you believe? Where do you go with the questions that we have and what questions really do we need to ask? I get it. I seriously do. I mean, I love Jesus and I have a relationship with him, and but I have questions. I mean, Easter's around the corner. Questions about Jesus raising from the dead. How does that happen? How does someone just stop being dead? How did he possibly do it? What if it happened. I mean, what if it didn't happen? And if it did happen, what does that mean with my life today? Well, it turns out that you're not the only one that's probably thinking maybe some of these questions when it comes to Easter Sunday and, and everything that has to do with Jesus being resurrected. Sometimes I think if, if I could only have been there during the time with one of the disciples, I could have honestly said, I would not have any questions whatsoever because I would have seen with my own two eyes, the miracles that he did, everything would make sense. 
but even Jesus' followers, the ones that were the closest to him, the ones that were with him every single day had doubts and questions, especially around the time of Jesus' death. But here's the spoiler alert. Jesus died, but he rose again. He was, he was, he was beaten, he was, he was imprisoned, he was executed for all of his teachings. But he rose again. And although Easter is a time of celebration, and we celebrate what Jesus did on the cross and how he's risen from the dead, it seems like a celebration during that time when it was all unfolding, when it was truly happening, when he was truly being accused of false teachings and being beaten and in prison, it almost seemed like everything was falling apart. It started with Judas. One of his closest followers betrayed him. Judas, did he not trust that Jesus was the Messiah? Did he not trust what it is that he said? Did he just not care? I mean, you spent three years of your life day by day with him. All of a sudden, you don't care about him. Why did he turn his back on Jesus? Then after Jesus was arrested and, and, and one of his closest friends, his followers panicked and he denied who Jesus was. John chapter 18, verse 17 and 18 says this, the girl at the gate said to Peter, are you one of the followers of that man? Peter answered and says, no, I'm not. It was cold, so the servants and the guards built a fire. They were standing around it, warming themselves, and Peter was standing with them. I mean, I really can't blame Peter here in this situation, though. He was he was juggling a lot, in, including his, his own pain, his own fear, and he, he probably was thinking for a second, have I been wrong about Jesus this whole time? I mean, I literally gave up everything that I had and I've followed him for three years. Is Jesus really who he says he was? Did I waste my time? Had he <clears throat> misunderstood if Jesus had said who he was, why would God allow this to happen? I don't understand. I don't, I don't get it. I mean, we saw the miracles, we saw the teachings, we saw what he did. Why would God allow this to happen? Years being a disciple of Jesus, living every day in his presence, you'd eat with him, you'd travel with him, you'd hear him teach, you'd even witness firsthand the miracles, the, the miracles of, of, of placing mud on someone's eyes and they would be able to see again, feeding the, the thousands of people with loaves of bread and fish. I mean, we saw the miracles. Why was it so confusing when Jesus was arrested? You see, everyone expected Jesus to be their Messiah, to be their Savior, to be their King, but suddenly things changed. And like Peter, we fear we've been wrong about Jesus. But the Bible goes on, and soon after, after Peter's denial, Jesus was beaten, he was tortured, he was killed. <coughs> His death was, <coughs> was public, humiliating, and painful. But it goes on, and if you think about it, let, let's see what happens next. John chapter 20, verse 1 through 8 says this, Early on Sunday morning, <clears throat> while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb. She saw the large stone was removed away from the entrance as she ran to Simon Peter and the other follower. And he said this, Have they taken the Lord out of the tomb? And we don't know where they put them. So Peter and the other followers started going to the tomb. Both of them were running, but the other followers ran faster than Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down, he looked in, and he saw the pieces of linen clothing, uh, clothing cloth lying there, but he did not go in. And then Peter finally reached the tomb and he went in and he saw the pieces of linen lying there. He also saw the cloth that had been around Jesus' head. It was folded up <clears throat> and it laid in a different place from the pieces of linen. Then the other followers went in and, <clears throat> and the one who reached the tomb first, he saw what happened and believed. So I want you to understand for a second, imagine Mary's confusion as she walked up to the tomb. Jesus's body was not there. Was it stolen? Was it a trick? Was this, was this some hoax? Did he really die? Did he not die? I mean, all of these questions now are going on in their head. See, they didn't have the social media back then. They couldn't figure out 
what was happening in the news. They had to experience it for themselves. Some of the disciples, like us, we struggle to believe the good news of Jesus, even when we see the evidence right there in front of us. <clears throat> and as more followers began to believe the good news that he really was alive, word started to spread, but not everyone was ready to believe. The Bible says in, in John chapter 20, verse 24 to 29, says this, Thomas was one of the 12, and when, <clears throat> but he was not one of the other followers when Jesus came. He told him, we saw the Lord, Thomas said, it's hard to believe. I will have to see the nails in his hands, put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side. It's only then that I will believe. A week later, the followers were in the house again and Thomas was with them and the doors were locked but Jesus came in and stood among them and he said peace be with you then he said to Thomas put your finger here look at my hands put your hand on my side stop doubting and stop believing Thomas said to, to Jesus my Lord and my God Jesus said to him you believe because you see me great blessings belong to the people who believe without even seeing me you see, like Thomas, it's it's sometimes difficult for us to trust Jesus and who he says he is until we have more evidence. Three people, Peter, Mary, Thomas, and actually also many other disciples had been with Jesus for years. But even when, even though they were overwhelmed, even though they're overwhelmed with doubt and questions and fears when things got difficult, when it was most difficult to believe Jesus, Jesus' followers likely wondered, God, what am I supposed to do? Is it true? Are you with me? But then while they were still doubting and questioning and full of fear, the Bible says that Jesus showed up. No matter how big their doubts may have seemed, no matter big, how big uh, 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 their, their, their questioning was, Jesus was, love for them was bigger. Because he loved them so much, Jesus met them in the midst of their doubts. No doubt or heartache could hold Jesus back from them, and it won't hold back the love that he has for you either. So I get it. You and I have doubts. We have, we have questions. We have doubts. And and we, we begin to think to ourselves and we may get the thoughts in our head to say, if I have doubts, does he even love me? If I have questions about who he is and, and in regards to my faith, does he love me? The Bible says that there's no doubt, there's no circumstance that could ever stop the love of Jesus from loving you. You see, doubt often gets <clears throat> a bad reputation sometimes. For some reason, we think that doubt disqualifies us from being loved or even being considered by God, a true follower of Jesus Christ. We begin to think questions like, if I have doubts about Jesus, then I'm not good enough. If I have doubts about Jesus, then my faith isn't real. If I have doubts about Jesus, then, then I'm going to be in big trouble if people in the church find out because I don't know exactly where I stand when it comes to my faith. But doubt doesn't have to be bad or shameful. Doubt was a part of the story then and it's a part of the story now. And, and even though this seems odd, doubt can actually lead us into a deeper relationship with Jesus when, we, when, when our doubts expose what we need most. You see, because do we need courage and clarity just like Peter did? Do we need comfort and hope just like Mary did? Do we need evidence and reassurance just like Thomas did? You see, the good news is that Jesus can give us all of those things. And so as we celebrate this Easter season, as we celebrate what Jesus did on the cross, it can feel confusing and there can be questions and there can be doubts, but don't forget, you're not alone. It was confusing for Jesus' followers at first too, and, it's okay if you don't have every answer to every question or resolution or of every fear and every doubt that you're experiencing. For now, here's what I hope that you remember. 
I hope that you remember that Jesus isn't surprised or afraid of your questions. And Jesus will always help you and intervene for you. And Jesus will never change his forever love for you. Because the love of Jesus is bigger than your doubts.